the Arab Revolution. I think, um, honestly, from a personal point of view, I think the most uh, thrilling event in, uh, in my lifetime. I think that it really is um, a watershed in the history of, uh, of the Middle East, when the uh, Tunisian youth in particular, and then followed by the workers in uh, the mining areas, in the working class areas of the main cities of Tunisia, uh, started the movement which they did not really expect what would be the outcome. And many bourgeois commentators said, oh, this is another explosion, like you have seen many of those explosions in the past. But this was something completely different. This was really um, the most downtrodden layers of, uh, of the youth, mostly working class youth, uh, peasant youth, who decided enough is enough. And um, they made the revolution. And this really exploded the myth, um, a very well financed and funded myth in academic circles, international circles, also in the left, a bit of racist myth saying that actually dictatorships in the Middle East for the Arab people are something almost natural, that they corresponded to their um, culture, to their nature, and that they needed you know, to be uh, taken in, into hands. But really the Arab revolution has uh, shaken all these uh, myths, prejudices, um, especially also in, in, in Europe, um, where um, there existed a myth that the Arabs actually, if they would come again on the streets, they would come on the streets uh, shouting slogans in favor of uh, God, shouting Allah Akbar. But now many people in Europe have seen that the Arab people actually are the same as uh, the European people and there's no fundamental difference be between them. I think also what the Arab revolution shows is that the mass movement really can uh, overthrow uh, the most brutal and most vicious of, uh, of dictatorships, starting in Tunisia, going over in Egypt, and in other countries, most of the regimes really have been destabilized, they've been trembling on their feet. Um, the Arab Revolution is still not finished, still only starting. Uh, I think it will be a long process, uh, a painful process, and it will be through ups and downs. But the most important thing, it has started. And when the masses started, I think they will learn very rapidly. Now they're mainly struggling against dictatorship for political freedom, for democracy. But the masters give a, not an abstract content to, to, to democracy, they give the real social or class content to democracy. It means jobs, end to exploitation, end to arbitrary um, uh, treatment, end to corruption, and, uh, and real freedom in all uh, spheres of, um, of, of human life. And this can only be answered not by bourgeois democracy, but by, uh, by socialism. And you see already in different parts of uh, the Arab world, left-wing ideas, socialist ideas, which seemed to be buried under 30, 40 years of dictatorship, reappearing again in songs, in literature, in poetry, but also in political programs, in books, and in yes, the mass attraction of left-wing ideas amongst uh, the masses, in particular in Tunisia, but also, I think, in, um, in Egypt. The last thing I want to say is that those are not just um, youth movements, that we have seen in Tunisia or Egypt or the rest of the Middle East, but fundamentally movement of the poor masses, of the working class masses, in which the industrial working class played a very decisive role, in particular in Egypt. A revolution which did not fall from the sky, but was prepared by 10 years of uh, upcoming you know, um, working class movement, independent unions, uh, a new militancy in, uh, in big factories like Al Mahala a factory uh, near uh, Cairo. And this is, uh, confirms actually the March is you of, um, of revolutions, that the motor force of revolutions uh, is not an amorphous multitude or just uh, you know, a social or non-socially determined youth, but fundamentally by uh, working class youth and by uh, the industrial working class. Is it? Is it okay? Can okay, maybe also explain how the uh, movements in the Arab world affected movements in, in Europe? Yeah, I think that this is the most surprising thing. Uh, first of all, revolutions are contagious. Um, even if many European people would not necessarily, from a personal view or a cultural view or religious view, identify with people in the Middle East um, or, or the Arab people, what we saw is a very rapid identification um, with the, uh, the Arab peoples and their revolution. And this is mainly due to, to the fact that uh, there was a similarity of uh, social, economic and political condition, although we don't live in, uh, in a brutal dictatorship like in Egypt or Tunisia, 
but people experience the dictatorship of the market, the dictatorship of capital. And um, very rapidly, not only in Europe, not only in Spain, in Greece, we saw um, a real emulation of uh, the methods of uh, Arab youth and workers, uh, occupation of place, of uh, big marketplaces, uh, mass demonstrations, clear references in the slogans to uh, Egypt, and did, did not limit itself to uh, Europe or to the south of Europe, but also had an effect on um, probably the most unexpected place we, we, we would uh, have uh, uh, expected the effect of this, uh, that's the United States. You've seen a formidable movement in Wisconsin of public sector workers referring openly that they wanted to struggle like Egyptians. Um, and this means that actually more than any other period in the world, revolution is a, a world affair. It's not a national thing. It cannot be limited and will not be limited to uh, regions, to uh, languages, to uh, continents. A revolution is a formidable intercontinental thing. And own, my own country in Belgium, I've seen young workers, factory workers, uh, shops who had really been activated, being enthused by what's happening in the Arab world and saying we just should do the same. Have an Arab revolution in Belgium, have an Arab revolution in Germany or in Austria. And this is the fantastic effect, I think, of the Arab revolution. That it is um, extremely contagious, um, it enthuses many people, and it breaks down all the prejudices, the racist prejudices, the religious prejudices, the cultural prejudices. And what we see is a common culture of struggle and of uh, um, wanting to fight together against uh, dictatorship in all its forms uh, of the market, of capital, of, uh, of, um, of uh, a general. Um, and this is, um, I think, very unique I think, for the 21st century.